There we go. Let's get to it. Hello. It's your show, Amir. How's it going? Okay, yeah. cool. I'm, I'm calling the meeting to order. Yeah. Awesome. Sorry, do you want the uh, agenda up so you can read off it? Oh, yeah, I, I have it actually pulled up on my okay. own. Perfect. Oops, hold on one second. I did. <laughs> All right, here we go. Cool. So uh, let's go ahead and call to order. Um, can I get a roll call? Sure thing. Maybe my, oh, are you going to go or me? You want, you want to do it? Uh, sure. Okay. Com committee member Gore? Present. Committee member Guzman. Here. Committee member Chang. Here. Vice Chair McCauley. Here. Chair Thagavis. Present. And committee member Bowen is absent this evening. Awesome. So um, let's go ahead and uh, review the agenda. Um, Seems like it's a short one today. It looks like we're just going over the study for the free bikes for kids program. Yes. Uh, we're going to keep having that until we come up with a full program to present. And then we'll actually the idea is to get maybe uh, council member Flores to attend one of our meetings, if possible, to kind of like give him a direct report or we go to council with it. So we'll, but for now we'll keep this as a standing item on our agenda for BPAC. Awesome. And did we get any feedback from um, the meeting with the, the Mother's Club or anything like that? Uh, that's in progress. Let me let me go over that when we get to the item. Oh, cool, awesome. Well, all right, um, let's see. Is there any public, um, is there any participants from the public today? Uh, we do not see anyone from the public uh, at this time. And we receive no emails or voicemails regarding feedback items. All right, awesome, okay. and. Uh, so um, then we'll move on to the approval of the minutes. Right. Cool. Anybody have uh, questions, comments, edits to the minutes? Um, otherwise, we'll chair. We'll we'll take roll. Oh, Frank. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, July meeting. Okay. I second that notion. Okay. Awesome. So now we'll move on to administrative sorry, business. Do you want to take a roll call or do we just uh, oh. shout approve? Oh yeah, let's do a roll call. Okay. There's not many of us here, so. Yeah, it's a process, you know. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll take care of it. Uh, take the roll call for the minutes approval. Uh, Chair Tagavis. Yay. Yay. Vice Chair McCauley. Yay. Uh, committee member Bowen is absent. Uh, committee member Chang. Okay. Committee member Gore. Yes. Committee member Guzman. Yes. All right. So approve. All right. Moving on. Awesome. Uh, we'll move on to the administrative business, which is a standing item on our agenda, the uh, Bikes uh, for Kids program. Yes. Um, so just wanted to update the group. Uh, literally received like information from uh, our interns. Uh, they actually ended up, I, I wasn't aware of what their responsibilities were uh, apart from helping us out and kind of get some information. What I realized was um, their workload summary, uh, they, they graduated on last Friday, so they're gone. Uh, it was a six week program. They had eight projects, including our shop local and a lot of like outreach and things like that. So, but they, they were, amazing interns and they were able to like provide us with uh information on you know what we discussed and uh followed up and set that meeting uh, to get collect more information however i'm still on the hunt for what the results of that meeting was um so all that they did provide me and i'm uh, looking to pull that up on the screen right now is um sorry give me a second um, just a continuation of that same uh, presentation that they provided us with additional uh, information. Uh, everybody can see this? Yes. Yeah. All right. So just additional information on things that we were curious about. So 
including you know things that we've already discussed like there you know like one of the key um issues that we you know kids and many south, south city residents have is that there is no place for kids to ride um but you know to start with um, we'll work on the side with the centennial trail and maybe branch out from there but again infrastructure and you know places to ride bikes is not something that we want to focus on with this program because we have our capital improvement program to <clears throat> excuse me to kind of like bridge the the gap on that one so we'll focus on uh the core of the program which is providing bikes for kids mm -hmm. um, the again there are, there are other foundations nonprofits that have already done this and so we're kind of like pulling a little bit of like things that work from there um and and see see what what they do um so sorry chris just to yeah. uh, recap what you're saying it's uh, you're saying that um the purpose of this one this what we're working on right now is to provide kids with uh find a way to provide kids with bikes mm -hmm. like like who who which kids could get them and and, and whatnot and how to get kid bikes and in terms of like where kids should uh ride that will be done separately through the capital um program or the other program you mentioned? Yes, so there's other programs that are already in place or are already um, underway. So again, the capital improvement program that our, our engineering public works is doing, increasing the number of like bike lanes we have in the city. We also have uh, one of the um, big efforts that we're working on is the Active South City uh, Bike and Ped Master Plan update, which would have a whole host of like new or you know recommended improvements to existing or you know like upgrades to existing bike facilities or bike uh infrastructure essentially uh, so there's like those types of projects that will address the infrastructure side so um, i guess that they, this so I, I think like this program is gauged more to like, to gauge the interest of the kids to you know get them the bikes so that therefore there's a use for the infrastructure projects right right exactly yeah so okay, who's got it. taking so, the input on those projects or are we supposed yeah. to help with those too or uh, from what I'm, sorry, please go ahead. And I, from what I'm aware of, like, the, so we've been working on the PED master plan. That's something that since I got on the committee, we've been working on. So those are projects that have already been standing, which are awesome. But I'm happy that now we're working on projects that are going to get people engaged into these visions that we have for the actual projects. Yeah. yeah so so um, it's like, oh, um, sorry. like, for example, right, like, like the, the proposed, like, uh, the bike park along the Centennial Trail, right? Like, that is being uh, considered under the capital improvements program and then someone else is who I guess what group is looking at that to say like yes or no or like what's the alternative site for that or that I mean it's not something that like we're actively pursuing because it's the major like infrastructure and like a place yeah. so it's something that we have to kind of like vet through like for example like one of the things that we can do as a recommendation from our program is to include like you know, hey, we need to place like the actual infrastructure, like a bike park, you know, things like that. And that's something that we have to vet through like the city manager's office. Um, when okay. Inclusion of this got, program. Yeah. got it. So do, do we still make that proposal to that city manager saying like, we recommend, you know, like a bike park in the, the Orange Park or, or you know, Centennial Park Trail Park? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. It's something we noted at the beginning, but like, got again, it. like just wanted to focus, like, how do we get bikes to kids? And who funds that, like, you know, like answer those questions first. And Got it, okay. One of the recommendations, we need a place to, you know, a dedicated space, so. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Okay. Uh, so just moving quickly through the information that the interns gave us last time. Um, again, like, um, the, you know, it's up to us to kind of set the parameters and things like that on, on the age group you know whether this would be a part of like a curriculum for schools but again like that's not like our um like we're, we're, we don't want to overstep and say hey schools put a bike curriculum um but we do want to you know also focus on like figuring out like well okay how do you know like education about bikes get folded into kind of like activities for kids um so that's not one of those things that we kind of have a placeholder until we get more information and resources on on that um, they, again, the interns went over like bike rodeos that used to happen here in South City and, you know, teaches kids how to like, you know, navigate and, uh, do some bike training. Um, and that's one of those recommendations that we'll, we'll make sure to include in there. Um, 
issues that we wanted to make sure to prevent is reselling of any free bikes that we might, you know, sponsor and give out. Like, so again, like um, auto repair shops or any anything to etch or engrave like specific, like, you know, identifying uh, numbers on, on these bikes would be something we need to um, account for. And we'll make sure that that's included in the program we develop. Um, and that's, I think this is probably where, oh no, around here is sort of, sort of like where the interns had the marching order to kind of collect more information. Uh, they had a meeting with, uh, I believe, Laura from the Mother's Club, um, but we don't have that information. And that's something I'm actively trying to figure out what exactly um, the information that they re received, uh, because we did have specific questions for them. So let's, I want to just put a placeholder on this one uh, until I figure out what, what did transpire. Because uh, So I'm reaching out to Laura from the Mother's Club uh, to get more information about um, what we need. Um, and then again, like si similar to infrastructure kind of concerns, one of the major barriers to owning a bike, there's no place to repair them. Nearest places are, you know, like something very commercial like Dick's Sporting Goods, or they'd be in like Burlingame or in San Francisco or in Pacifica. Um, the interns like flagged that monthly bike repair pop-up shops at shops at like local local events would be something that could be um, um, something that could be implemented. But again, like we'll, I, I would like to reach out to let's say Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition um, to see how they've like um, helped cities, you know, like kind of bridge that resource gap because they are also aware of like that the lack or the the bike repair shop desert that we're in. Um, so we have that. Um, we had the interns look into kind of any anywhere where we had uh, promoting bicycle riding, owning bikes uh, in the city. They did uh, figure out that um, this build a bike nonprofit had previously worked with a uh, Martin Elementary in uh, <clears throat> in the city. So. That's one way to kind of um, narrow who we target for um, this type of program. Um, so that's just there for thought. Um, in terms of uh, the interns that put this together about like bike sizes, and you know that the this I think that their recommendation was to look at 24 inch bikes because that would cater a lot a, a wider swath of like kids like. You know, basically all the way up to about middle school range kids. Uh, but again, we'll we'll discuss more in a little bit. Something that did come up was what to do about about bike storage. So is, this is something that BPAC would need to kind of uh, also decide is that you know if we're providing bikes, do we want to try to provide a way to um, have them store it within their homes, like the the, the little hooks, and provide that as well. Because uh, then, what does that cost? And then, um, and other more, um, more, a, a broader range of like uh, solutions, like having storage lockers at apartments, storage lockers in different parts of the city that maybe the city like um, provides. Um, but you know, doing these other things again like makes the program a lot bigger and maybe a little bit more difficult to implement. So this is something to consider. Um, and just a note that um, San Mateo County Office of uh, Education runs the Safe Routes to School. Um, we were in touch with them on a couple of programs like Theresa Valles uh, Kelly and Vanessa Castro. Have uh, we, we reached out to them, let them know that we're trying to develop this and they did give us a couple of really good ideas. Um, one is like to actually do a bike to school day if that's something that is not done uh, right now, uh, the interns, I think, looked into it and um, bike to school day, like across the, the country, across the state, a lot of them happened in the last, like, you know, pretty much constantly in the last few years and getting schools to participate is a great way to kind of encourage this interest in these types of uh, programs. So that's the kind of the data that the interns uh, provided. Um, what I do want to share now is what we're here for tonight. Um, so um, 
uh, what the interns uh, provided was you know kind of our, our bare bones of approach and 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 why we're doing that so they've looked at the the bike program that they did at um, the build a bike program at Martin Elementary and so they essentially just pick one fifth grade class which is which is about like 20 to 30 students and we we had them look into like how much did like do these things that we want to provide cost so 24 inch bike is about $300 helmet you you bike box um, um, and it ends up being about $370 uh, per person times 20 to 30 students is about $12,000 so you know like they're it's not cheap and that's just only one class of fifth graders so just you know keep in mind uh, with that like what I want to make sure that we kind of um, that we kind of uh, identify tonight is like some of the these narrow the program down okay so first thing we want to um, identify is looking into this right hand of the page to identify the who um, so we're gonna there are specific criteria uh, in selecting age groups and questions like, do we want to focus on age or do we want to focus on income? Um, to do that, um, a, an easy tool to use is uh, the MTC's equity priority um, or the equ equity priority communities, um, which is kind of like a GIS map of uh, our communities of concern here in South City. Um, let me see if I can actually pull that up for you. So just briefly, MTC's uh, uh, priority equity priority communities have been identified in these areas of the city, which includes a lot of our downtown uh, uh, and like basically running from Grand to Chestnut and then a lot of Oyster Point um, and then all the way to the communities all the way down to, uh, to San Bruno. Um, so using that metric or using this kind of model it, and it's something that commute.org, MTC obviously, um, other um, like uh, county organizations like kind of use this tool as a way to like, okay, here are the, and it would, in these areas, this is our, are this uh, schools that we should probably focus on. So that includes South San Francisco High School, Martin Elementary again, uh, Parkway Heights, which I believe is a middle school, and then uh, Spruce Elementary. So, you know, like we can, we can look at these four and implement and try to target one school or all of them. But again, like keep in mind that, you know, what uh, the costs kind of jump up if we're going to try to do this across like four different schools. And then please stop me if there's any thoughts to this, because uh, I really don't want to talk for like the next like 30 minutes. What is the budget for for this program? Has it right. been established yet? No, it hasn't. So that's why it, it, that, it, it's, that's part of the difficulties is that we do not have a budget. It's something that the city manager did tell us to come up with the program parameters and then it's up to the city manager's office to find the money to fund it. I would, okay, lovely. I would be interested in hearing what the mother's group has to say as far as um, what age group do they feel is be safe where they would feel safe mm -hmm. and be able to navigate our current roads um, or sidewalks. Um, because if we if we make it too broad and we give it to like young kids, that would be great to train them. But if the parents don't feel safe with them on the road, then it's just a bike that's not going to be used. Okay. Uh, I would also be interested in to know um, more about the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, I mentioned last time that. They had, or not, through, through a different program, Bikes for Kids or something like that. They went through the Boys and Girls Club to distribute them to kids. And what criteria did they use to hand them out to the kids? Was it on a 
age, income, or whatever. So uh, I, I thought that the, 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 uh, the, the interns were going to um, approach the Boys and Girls Club and ask that question, pursue that a bit further. That, would, that could help us a lot, I think. Yeah. But that, okay. again, instead of using the school, we might also use the Boys and Girls Club as a distributing factor. That, uh, given that the interns are gone, it's going to fall onto us to reach out and get that information. So can I ask a question? Yes, uh, every year, the high school, the seniors do a capstone project where they go out and do volunteer work. Is there any chance we can get some of them interested and they could help Have us? your hat. Senior project. Senior project. Okay. Yeah, no. senior project. Like, yeah. I, they call it the capstone, but... Uh, like my son, when he graduated, he worked at a homeless shelter. I saw, I mean, the kids had so many great ideas, but maybe one of them or two of them would be interested between the two high schools. Okay. I, I remember my year, like a couple of people did go, um, they went to Los Cerritos, like a couple of seniors from my class went to Los Cerritos and they would wear teacher, teacher's aides. So that's like a super good idea. I feel like they would be interested in doing that. Is that is the cap something just a specifically high school, uh, like a senior in high school project? Yeah, it's only the seniors in both high schools have to do it. Sure. Okay. So, so do we learn um, from the uh, from the background that the interns did, which um, communities would would most need our services? Like, is it the low income or is it middle income? Um. No, um, the information that we got back, and apologies, like I didn't get a full like download from the interns before they left town. Um, well, no, they're in town; they live here. Um, but um, the the direction they pointed me to towards was this MTC, like communities of concern, kind of like map. It's to target not middle income, but actually low income. Um, uh, like households, just because that is where you would typically see more, uh, like less of an access to uh, bicycles and let you know less resources to, to you know begin like to bridge that gap to like be a bicycle rider. So, um, like I didn't I didn't disagree with the, uh, the where we were trending and looking at these communities instead, unless BPAC has a different. Uh, or committee members have different uh, direction they want to go to. I think we should focus our our program on where we think it will have the most impact. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, if we have done the studies and have the research to show that that's going to be in the low income communities, mm -hmm. then I think that's where we should focus. And then the next thing, I think we should choose an age group or an age range mm -hmm. where we think that, um, you know, the bicycle would most likely be utilized or used. Um, you know, I would like to be able to offer it at least um, to children who are learning to ride. So, and give them that first bike, which is very meaningful to some, to, to families and to children. But that may not be where you know we need to focus. I think we need more research in that area. Okay, yeah, no, we'll take that into account and see what uh, other information we can get on who uh, on who this could benefit the most. I think that's what we need clarity on do um i mean is i feel like we have like a summer camp right that's offered through like the orange park like through parks and recs and i feel like sometimes those have like a uh, like income based or like financially needed like program right where they like wouldn't have to pay for it so if we wanted to target actually the kids that needed like the like economic like kind of help to get the bike i mean wouldn't it be then i, I feel like that would be a great way to partner up to like, target the kids that would need help because they already are participating in that kind of program for summer camp. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's part of the outreach we're going to do in this next phase um, is to uh, check in with our uh, Parks and Rec department because the Mother's Club is sponsored by the Parks and Rec department and to kind of like get more information.
information out of like you know programs that are already being run here in the city and you know like to gauge their criteria for you know like who who they target with that program so i think that that's one way we can get more information and resource okay and, and i think i've been thinking about what natalie said is she saying um, we need to find out also, I mean, we might give someone a, a bicycle, but maybe they live on Grand Avenue and they can't ride it because it's just too too much traffic there. So is that what she was trying to say is we need to narrow down where we can do the most good or uh, is that? I think safety and the parents' um, comfort with the children being riding at whatever age group is another consideration. So a parent may not be comfortable having a first grader ride on, on, on Linden or Grand, but they might be more comfortable with a junior, uh, a middle school student. So, I mean, if we give it to the first grader who lives in a, a congested area, is he gonna be use the bike because the parents may not be safe with feel comfortable with him using it. Um, so those are the questions I think we should kind of figure out before we target the, the exact age group to give this to, 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 to be a beneficiary of our program. Okay. So it's just additional questions. Arian, is that uh, Yes, thank you for clarifying that, Ali. I was thinking, trying to put it together so thank you yeah. so uh the other okay so let's table picking one of the the type of school and the age group um given that we want more information on who can this actually really benefit um because i do understand what you're saying is that if we pick let's say martin elementary for this program are there bike facilities that are that, that you know kids in this school can safely write in and I don't know that it's something we have in this area right so but again yeah I, I agree uh, we'll get more information on that um, so just wanted to then keep pushing forward and make sure we kind of talk about like program program limits again um, are we comfortable proceeding with like, let's say we figure out who, what, what type of school we're going to give it to, whether it's a high school, middle school, or, or elementary kids. Do we do one class where it's like 20 to 30 students? And then, or do we go the entire grade? Because again, like it's about a $12,000 program. And are we providing, you know, again, the, the number of bikes that we're going to provide? Are we also then providing safety equipment and, you know, and any, you know, like figure out some like storage, like, uh, solutions for them like so is that something that we want to include in the program is that something that we want to you know not provide I, I, I would recommend like we should try to give bikes to students that actually would want it to like like maybe like have them write an essay like a, a one page reason why they want a bike or something just so that we don't you know give just one that they Me. might want to incentivize them to just sell it or otherwise yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, they'll be etched, or at least that's our, our hope. Yeah. So we want to make sure that there's an identifying. But no, I, exactly, I, I agree that um, the, if it's a class of 30 in one grade and like five of them don't want bikes or already have bikes, right? So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just, say, just ask like, like oh, wh wh why would you want a bike? What would you use it for? Oh, I don't know. We could come up with questions, but like some something. Mm -hmm. Okay. To want to participate in the program, like I think. Yeah, exactly. Okay, all right, cool. We'll include that. Um, again, length. So th uh, moving on, like number three there on your screen, um, the pilot program length. Um, in a conversation with Teresa Vallis Kelly for the San Mateo County Office of Education, she did mention to me that other cities. She didn't. She wasn't. Uh, she didn't provide me with the uh, the name, or um, that. It may may have been South City at one point too that they had um, programs where like the incoming freshman class had like this bicycle like education program which it's the same kind of like you know 
like set of students progressing through high school and then at the end of the by the time they graduate from like I think senior or when when they get to their senior like at the end of that their graduation they become kind of like certified like bike repair like specialist like I thought that was a cool concept but I didn't know if anyone was familiar with with some anything like that because that seemed like a way to like it, it touched on the issue of retention like um, yeah that's a great idea because the high school seems to be looking for ways to help make the kids um you know able to get a job they have a what do you a culinary program and the auto the shop program and that would be a great thing yeah so so like there's like ideas like that but we could you know but again like the, the underlying uh, issue is retention like if we gave it to like an elementary student and then they didn't have anything to support this kind of um uh, like this, this having a bike, being able to like ride a bike, right? So that, that's just kind of something that we should kind of think about. I, I mean, if if we had to choose priorities, I would say an education program for the students who receive bikes would be um, a higher priority to me for this program than a storage uh, program because. Hopefully, you know, in our bicycle plans and when we work with developers, a lot of the new developments have included um, bicycle storage as one of their, their areas. And I think putting that in a separate category where we deal with apartment developers or we deal with it in, the, in our bicycle plan would be a, a better use of, uh, of you know, our time and and priorities for this program. I agree. Uh, anybody else have thoughts on that one? Because I, I, I do think like it comes hand in hand that like if we're gonna give a bike, we better give the education to handle that bike as well. Because again, like our, our streets have, we have bike facilities, uh, bike and pet facilities, but they, they cannot, they are, they, it has room to improve, right? So. I guess uh, since it is a pilot program that we'd be entering into, I think it would make sense to limit it to one year and then reassess after that if we want to continue, enhance or, or uh, let it go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, since I've got the floor, one other thing, just Going back to item one, you mentioned those schools, the high school, the um, the intermediate, or parkway, and then the two elementary. There happens to be three elementary schools in that area. That's just the Los Cerritos. So it's oh, a big practice, but I wouldn't want you to miss out and be criticized later. So I don't know if you left it out on purpose or not. But it, Los Cerritos is right opposite the park. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks, Frank. Like I won't necessarily be criticized for it. It's all of us that's going to get criticized for it. <laughs> That's where I went. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. We'll yeah. Keep, so no, keep that in my mind. Kids went, my kids went to Spruce, so I don't care. But uh. yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, I so think again. also, and I think also um, focusing on one age group or one uh, grade level mm -hmm. would help. So. Um, you know, we could do, if we have elementary schools, if we decide to do elementary schools, we could do one grade, focus on one grade level in the elementary schools, or um, if it's the middle school, one yeah. grade level. In one the grade school. level there, okay. At least, at least in the, you know, pilot, just to, to see how this works and where we'd want to change it. Yeah. Okay. Great. And then uh, moving forward, um, yeah, okay. One year program, focus on one age group or one grade level so that we can precisely monitor that. And that's something that we would be tasked with uh, or BPAC would be tasked with. And then um, we'll see We'll see how it goes. I think that's, that's, a, we'll, that's a good parameter to set so that we can say we, we can, it's easier to get funding when people know how long the program is for. So, um, so just moving on, um, 
the, uh, this one is more of a plug from San Mateo County Office of Education that they have a school travel fellowship uh, application and invites members of the community. Um, and I don't know if that's something that we want to uh, go into um, as we develop this program, but basically if there's uh, someone from BPAC or any of you as individuals want to participate in this, uh, there this there's an application that San Mateo County Office of Education has, and you basically get receive technical assistance from it, the consultant that they have. Um, it's the same consultant that we have for um, uh, working on the bike and pet uh, master plan update. There's quarterly meetings, and um, and they do provide some resources like receiving non-permanent quick build materials for pop-ups and demonstration projects uh, near schools, and then a walk audit like um, like. Uh, the walk audit program that they do host to kind of like identify like opportunities and needs in specific like school areas um, and then up, updated uh, like walk and bike route maps for schools in in the city so there's th that kind of program and partnership and I I I know that we're going to in, interact with them a little bit more as we kind of move through the program given that they are partnering with like commute.org to host like bike education and a lot of other um, kind of um, events at schools that deal with like bike safety. So uh, it's it's something to note that we should um, perhaps like in our next meeting have someone from the County Office of Education to kind of give us a little bit of a, a kind of a breakdown of what they do with the schools. Um, so that's that's a suggestion very long-winded suggestion for everyone. Uh, and again, like this next one is really for me to figure out what uh, what, what information we receive from the South City Mothers Club. And again, I'll check in with our uh, Parks and Rec Department um, to kind of partner up and say, hey, we're trying to explore this program. Let us know how you, for the programs that they do sponsor, we'll figure out how to like, how they choose and what criteria they use. Um, yeah, and then, um, but uh, all this is a lot of work, so I am looking for BPAC to appoint a point person. I was already looking at Arian, but I wanted, I wanted, I wanted democratically <laughs> uh, uh, elected. So if someone can help me, kind of uh, help city staff um, manage like the information that we receive that we send out, we'll keep you in the loop. Like um, when we do reach out to, let's say, Boys and Girls Club. And then whatever comes out of there, like help me manage that information, and then um, then we'll get a better kind of draft of the program ready for our next meeting. Well, do we have a volunteer? Uh, if Arian is willing to do it, I would nominate Arian. Yes. <laughs> I second that. Okay, I guess I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, you're already celebrating that in the tropics. And if you need, if you need assistance, I can, I can help out too. But oh, good. Thank you, Natalie. Sure. All right. So yeah, well, when I send emails, I'll uh, CC both of you and then any specific questions and anything we need to start crafting the, like the program guidance, um, I'll help walk you through that and then. Okay. Just put me to work. Yeah, we'll do. Um, the, it did come up last time uh, about you know being able to meet uh, in between our meetings, and there are some Brown Act kind of rules to that stop us from informally meeting through BPAC. That's why I didn't give anyone like any kind of like in, informal BPAC related stuff um, because you know like. BPAC has to be something that's duly noticed to the public and available for the public. So it's not, you know, so, but we also don't, I don't believe we have the capacity to, we can do like special meetings like in between, but we would have to then cancel one of our later, later meetings. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. That's why, it, like, I get it that, you know, um, we're, we're meeting once a month. And then so we don't find out any, if we've made progress until a month later. Uh, but, you know, so it, it is what it is, but at the same time, we can, if we, there's something more immediate, we could schedule a special meeting um, um, to kind of address that. 
uh, but just wanted to kind of make sure everybody's clear on kind of like the, the process like we have to follow certain procedures. Um, so uh, like that Google document that was created where we all put our ideas in, is that against the Brown Act or is that okay? I mean, that's a working document or? Um, it so is actually not. Yeah, no, if we're BPAC and we're working on a document like that, it's not something we should be uh, uh, using to communicate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's like other ways. And we're we're consulting with our like city attorney to make sure like, hey, are we doing this? You know, like uh by the book, uh, and that's that's how we'll proceed. So, yeah, it's okay. it's confusing that. I, yeah. Yeah. As a newest member, I had to watch the video, and it was confusing. Oh yeah. No, it's and. A, uh, is group emails mailing this or something like of that nature? Is that reasonable? Like, because you know we have like a you, you know like an email that sends us uh, documents to all of us. Could we set up like a, a you know Google group email list that if someone has a question, <laughs> they could uh, they could uh, send it to the group? Right. So the the way we can actually do it is that you can um, you, we can do it through BPAC by, you can send your question to the group through the BPAC email, which I then as secretary can distribute to all of you. Like it's, it's weird, I know. Okay, no, no, I think, I think that's, that's reason that, that works out well, mm -hmm. right? Because someone could just ask a question through that email and that email is just distributed like uh, on, on a, a quicker occurrence than a monthly, just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, and that helps all. So like uh, my son will be starting school soon and if I have to talk to the principal, can I mention to him, hey, I volunteered your school to do the capstone project. Any students want to, is that allowed or? Uh, you know, I, I don't see why not. Like you're, like it's it's a program we're working on and we're trying to obtain resources and we're, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not different, for, any different from me going, having conversation with the San Mateo Co County Office of Education saying like, hey, I. Tell me how you do this program. So okay. I think that, that that's within bounds. So. Yeah, because I know my son has to choose one, but I don't want to force him to do bikes. I mean, but if there's some other student that's really interested in bikes, right, right. exactly, that'd be we a better that, fit. Exactly. Yeah, we want that captive audience. So. Yeah. Uh, I think that was it. This is good. This is this is a good. Um, this is a good. Uh, not starting point. Hey, like we, it's a good milestone to have. Um, so we'll we'll start working on some of these outreach and data that we need, and then we'll report back uh, through our BPAC email as soon as it comes in. After obviously, any other comments, suggestions, things we should follow up on for this program? No? Cool. All right. So, shall we move on to committee comments? I mean, I guess that was pretty much <laughs> that covered that. Actually, that was just the item. So now, yeah. if anyone has anything not related to our uh, free bikes program? No. Seeing none. None. Well, just the, uh, the actually item number one. I said study session. And I thought that we were going to be talking a little bit about the um, the master plan. So oh. that wasn't uh, that study session was it regarding the bikes too. No, no, uh, it was. Uh, we didn't have that in the agenda, but I could I could provide you an update on the bike and ped master plan if that's what the committee wants. Yeah. Um. Well. Well, do we have that on? When are, when are we having that on an as an agenda item to go over the plan? Because it's been a while since we actually went over the plan in general. Right. So I would want to I would want to dedicate that as an actual full. Okay. Sure. We can we can put that on the agenda. So oh, just um, forecasting. Um, we will have a project on the September September agenda. The um, if, if folks remember the one twenty four airport, the PS business parks. There will mm -hmm. be a development project there. Um, they're coming back with, um, I believe they were making modifications or doing some changes to the pedestrian tunnel on a, on the airport. So mm -hmm. they're coming back with plans on what they're proceeding uh, with the project on. So that's something that we're, they're actively trying to get on the September agenda. So, okay. yeah. 
we might might have a little bit more on the agenda next next time. Yeah. Well, you know what? I welcome it. <laughs> sure. All right. So we'll we'll put the uh, uh, update on the bike and fed master plan on that, and the uh, there's going to be a project plus we'll, an update on the free bikes program too. So at least three items on the next agenda. Uh, can we move on to staff comments, Chair? Yes, yes, okay. we can. Let's move on to staff comments. Yeah. So I just wanted to um, thanks for hanging on. Jeff Chow from our engineering uh, division has an announcement. Go ahead, sir. Hey, thanks, thanks Chris, for the introduction. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'd be back with Merge Monday. It's Jeff Chow, of the engineering. Uh, Chris, do you mind if I share the screen for a quick bit? Yes, go ahead. Am I sharing? No, I'm not. Perfect. All right, everybody can see my screen okay? Um, okay, great. So just want to maybe uh, update or introduce um, this project to any new members. Um, this is the US 101 Produce Avenue Interchange Project. Um, um, project details can be found on our website. Um, you go on to departments, public works, engineering, capital improvement program. I'll, I'll also send a link on the uh, Zoom call as well, just for you guys to have access to it. But basically, I just want to introduce this project. Um, uh, so the city partnered with uh, San Mateo County Transportation Authority to sponsor this project. Um, this project, well, I'll zoom in on this um, map really quick. This project is in the early phases of planning um, for now. So it's looking to add a new additional east and west connection across the US 101 uh, to you know, accommodate future growth along this area and to improve the traffic operations with pedestrian bike, bicycle access uh, within the city. Um, so that's just a very brief summary of the project. Um, you could, yeah, I'll definitely welcome you guys to take a look at this uh, website here. I'll, I'll include a link after I'm done talking. Um, it has more background history and you know, some project updates and project summary as well. Uh, basically what I want to notify uh, the BPAC member is that we are having a Let's see, a virtual scoping meeting as part of the uh, a planning and environmental process. This is scheduled on, let's see, a couple of weeks from now, August 24th, uh, Tuesday, August 24th at 6 to 7.30. Uh, we will be sending out, um, this is just a draft kind of a, a mailer or postcard. Um, so we'll be sending out these uh, hopefully soon. Um, Right now, it's still not ready, quite ready yet. So uh, once it's ready, I'll send this over to Chris and he can forward it to the BPAC members. Um, but yeah, just want to notify uh, the group that this project is um, you know, in the planning environmental phases and there's this uh, let's see, a scoping meeting. They'll discuss you know, the preliminary project information and they're looking for feedback and re receiving any uh, early input as well. So that's all I had to share. Um, if there's any questions, uh, feel free to contact me or, um, or Chris and yeah, let me post that link to you and I'll stop sharing. Yep. So mark your calendars, August 24th for that scoping meeting. Uh, they will be still taking comments until the 9th, is it Jeff? Correct, yeah. yeah. So, but the scoping meeting is usually for California Environmental Quality Act. Uh, it's one of those mandatory things to do to solicit any kind of early information the things to uh, neighbor the your your community is concerned about uh, with these projects kind of potentially making uh, significant changes to the to the roadways there so yeah. and as soon as we have the flyer we'll dis distribute that to BPAC and you'll also get it um, through other means and through, from the city yes thank you Chris yes. thank you BPAC members awesome thank you. Um, last comment. Actually, it's a it's more of a question to BPAC. How many BPAC members have actually seen the bike and ped master plan? Like, ha has previously worked on it. I know. I have. Okay. So, Aaron, shaking your head there. Tommy, have you? I don't think maybe because someone posted a link in the chat. Maybe I could refresh my mind if I have seen it or not. No, so, so the update I actually have is that um, um, we're, our consultant, our, we have released the admin draft for, you know, city staff to look at, like our 
parts numerically and our public works and engineering folks to take a look at the, the admin draft um, and provide their comments to just to account for like things that have changed uh, since March 2020, like in the pandemic, uh, you know, like there's been bike bike facilities that, that have been completed already and, you know, some possible changes to recommendations. And our consultants timeline is essentially that after this this round of comments from staff that they'll they'll work on it, they'll modify it, and then have a full draft version. So there's an admin draft for staff, and then there's draft version that then will be shared to be packed as well at that time. But I just wanted to double check that if you're okay with that approach, or do you, does some members of BPAC want to see the progress so far? And I just wanted to double check if the, anyone was interested in providing comments at this point. I would like to see the progress. It's been about, I feel like it's been a couple of years since we last talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And so we've given city staff until about the middle of August to get their comments in. So I, I don't have a problem sharing that with BPAC, but I do, but the, the comment deadline has to stand so in order for us to proceed with the work so i'll share the link with bpac and then you can download the admin draft plan and give me provide me with the comments so i can share that with our consultants yeah adina any opinion no okay yeah because uh yeah that's it sorry i just um i think that's i think that's totally fine i just think yeah. um once it is shared with BPAC, it will be a public document. Yep. So we just have to keep that in mind. Yes, yeah, so my the caveat is it's all draft. So yeah, right. nothing is final. Like uh and that's no, I think I think that makes sense. So it's been a long time and it's good yeah. I think, to like kind of yeah. loop back in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, I know that some folks like have cycled through like tenure and BPAC and obviously we're we're just you know resuming the the work now so I'll, I'll i'll share that with bpac and then let me know uh, directly and then uh, of any kind of comments or changes you, you might want and that's yeah. all i had all right so that's no so no more staff comments um cool so we're gonna get um a motion to adjourn this is natalie i move that we adjourn the meeting I second Natalie's motion. This is Arian. Okay. Okay, so we need to adjourn that 6.56. All right. Awesome, guys. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Chris, put me to work. Yes, we'll do. I'll, I'll be in touch before the end of the week. That's for sure. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Take care, everyone.